Hello friends, I welcome you all to Doubt Forum. Today's question is one end of a horizontal uniform beam of weight W and length L is hinged on a vertical wall at point O and its other end is supported by a light in extensible rope. The other end of the rope is fixed at point Q at a height L above the hinged point O. A block of weight equals alpha times W is also attached to the point P on the beam as shown in the figure. The rope can sustain a maximum tension of 2 root 2 W and we have to find out the correct options out of the 4 given. So this is the given figure. The length of the beam is L, the weight is W, one end of the beam is hinged to this vertical wall at point O. The other end of the beam is supported by a light in extensible rope and there is a weight equals alpha time w is also suspended to this point P. First thing which we have to do in this question is to mark all the forces which are acting on this beam. So first force which I will be marking is the weight of this beam. Weight of the beam would be acting in the middle of the beam because it is mentioned that the beam is uniform in nature and the total length of the beam is L. So at a distance L by 2 from point O or point P would be the center of mass of this beam and at that point the weight W would be acting. At point P there is a weight equals alpha time W is also acting in the downward direction. One end of the beam is supported by this rope. So there would be a tension in this rope. So let's say this tension is T. We can break this tension into its two components. One would be in the horizontal direction and other would be in the vertical direction. As we can see that the length of the beam is L and the distance between this point Q and O is also L and this angle is 90 degree. So these angles would be 45 degree. When this angle is 45 degree, so we can simply write the horizontal component as T times of cos 45 and vertical component would also be T times of sine. 45 and the value of cos 45 and sin 45 both are 1 upon root 2. The last thing which we have to mark here is the reaction force due to this hinge between the beam and the vertical wall. So there would be a reaction force acting at point O. We actually don't know the direction of reaction force but what we can do we can simply break that reaction force into its two component. So one component of the reaction force would be acting in the horizontal direction and the other component of the reaction would be acting in the vertical direction. So we can name the horizontal component as Rx and the vertical component of the reaction as Ry. So these are the forces which are acting on this system. Now what we can do, we can simply balance the forces because there is no net motion in the horizontal as well as in the vertical direction. So we can simply balance the horizontal as well as vertical forces one by one. So let's balance the horizontal forces first. As we can see that there are two horizontal forces which are acting. The first is Rx, the second is T cos 45. So these two forces would be balancing each other because there is no net motion in the horizontal direction. So what we can do, we can simply write that Rx would be equal to T times of cos 45 and the value of cos 45 is 1 upon root 2. So this would be T upon root 2. So this would be our first equation for the horizontal component of that reaction. Now let's balance the vertical forces. As we can see that there are four vertical forces which are acting on this system. The first one is the reaction part that is Ry, W that is the weight of the beam, alpha time W the weight of this box which is suspended and this T times of sine 45 degree. So these four forces are acting in the vertical direction. So here we will be assuming that the vertical upward forces would be positive and the vertically downward force would be negative. So this would become Ry, the first vertical force plus this T sine 45 would be T upon root 2. So these two are the vertically upward force. Then W, so this would be minus because the weight is acting vertically downward. 
फोर्थ फोर्स इज अल्फा टाइम्स डब्ल्यू दिस वुड ऑल्सो बी इन माइनस सम ऑफ ऑल द वर्टिकल फोर्सेज वुड बी इक्वल टू जीरो सो फ्रॉम हेयर वी कैन सिंपली फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ वर्टिकल रिएक्शन एज डब्ल्यू प्लस अल्फा डब्ल्यू माइनस टी अपॉन रूट टू सो दिस वुड बी अवर सेकेंड इक्वेशन सो इन दीज टू इक्वेशन द ओनली वेरिएबल विच वी हैव एज्यूम्ड इज द टेंशन इन द रोप सो फर्स्ट थिंग विच वी हैव टू डू इज टू फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस टेंशन टी देन सिंपली पुटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ टी इन दीज टू इक्वेशन वी कैन मैच द कंडीशन विच आर मैंशन इन द क्वेश्चन so in order to find out the value of this tension t what we can do we can simply apply the torque equations as we can see that there is no net movement in this beam so the net torque of this beam would be equal to zero to find out the torque we need force and the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the point where force is applied so in this question we can see that only the vertical forces can cause torque in this beam horizontal force would not, would not cause any torque in this beam so we have to take care of the vertical forces alone so the first vertical force is the ry so this would be ry because this beam can rotate about this axis qr and the force ry is also acting at the same point so the value of r would be zero because this r is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied here the axis of rotation and the point where the force is applied both are same so the value of r would be zero for ry so this is our first torque the second torque would be torque due to force t sin 45 degree so this torque would be the force is t upon root 2 and the distance from the axis of rotation is capital l so this is our second force which may cause torque in this beam the third force is the weight the direction for the downward forces we will be taking as negative so this would be w into perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation for the for w would be l by 2 l by 2 the last force which can cause torque in this beam is this alpha time w and this force is also acting in the downward direction so we have to take minus sign for this alpha w force so this is alpha w and the perpendicular distance would be l these are the sum of all the torques which are acting in this beam and as we can see that the beam is still not moving or the net movement in this beam is zero so we have to equate this equation to equal to zero in this equation this term would become zero and from here t upon root 2 this l is common so this l will cancel t upon root 2 would equal to w by 2 plus alpha times w so this is the value of tension which we have assumed now all we have to do is to simply put the value of t in equation 1 and 2 then we will find what are the conditions given in the question so as we can see that t upon root 2 is nothing but rx so this t upon root 2 is also representing the rx and the, this rx is the horizontal component of the reaction force so let's find out the condition about the horizontal component so in option b it is given that the horizontal component of the reaction force at point o is equal to w for alpha equal to 0.5 so if we put the value of alpha is 0.5 let's find out the value of rx so this would be w by 2 plus if we put alpha is 0.5 so this would become w by 2 and the net rx would come out to be w so our option number b is correct now coming to the option number a it is given that the vertical component of the reaction force at o does not depend on alpha for that i have to put the value of t in this equation number 2 so this equation number 2 would become w plus alpha w minus this t upon root 2 is this value so i'm just putting it here so this would be w by 2 plus alpha times w so this whole equation would become w plus alpha w minus w by 2 minus alpha w so this alpha w and alpha w would cancel each other and the value of ry would come out to be w by 2 so this ry is 
independent from alpha so our option number a would also be the right one coming to the third option the tension in the rope is 2w for alpha equals to 0.5 so for this option all we have to do is to put the value of alpha as half in this equation and find out the value of t so from this equation the value of t would come out to be w by 2 plus this would be 0.5 w and this root 2 would be opposite side of the equal so this would become w by 2 and w by 2 would be w by 2 into root 2 so the tension in the rope would be root 2 time w it would not be equal to 2w so option number c is incorrect one the fourth option is the rope breaks if alpha greater than 1.5 for that once again we will put the value of alpha as 1.5 so if we put the value of alpha as 1.5 so this equation here would become t would equal to w by 2 plus 1.5 times w into root 2 now this would become w by 2 this is half w by 2 so this would become 2 w into root 2 or this would be 2 root 2 w so this is the total tension when the value of alpha is 1.5 and it is given in the question that the rope can sustain a maximum tension of 2 root 2 times w so as long as the value of alpha is 1.5 the the, this rope would not break but the movement the value of alpha in, increases to 1.5 or it, it becomes greater than 1.5 the tension in the string or this rope would exceed to its limit that is 2 root 2 w so this would break so option number d is also correct so our option a b and d are the correct one so thank you for watching if you still have any doubt please let me know in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel doubt forum see you in the next video till then take care bye bye